What is the anti-hair loss routine of somebody who spends $2 million per year on anti-aging related protocols to look younger again? He calls himself the world's most measured human. And if you ask him how old he is, well, here's how he explains it. Anti-aging tech entrepreneur Brian Johnson, who claims to have reduced his biological age by five years with his special protocol called the Blueprint, decided to share his anti-hair loss regimen in one of his recent videos. Will the degree of his hair loss reversal be worth the amount of money he's investing on a yearly basis into his health and fitness? In today's video, we'll be having a detailed look at his special formula consisting of finasteride, minoxidil, and other special ingredients that are anti-hair loss, and we'll be looking at how effective is it really? And important things that you should know before trying this exact protocol that he is using if you want to avoid side effects and maximize the effectiveness from this anti-hair loss protocol. So without further ado, let's start. So first he starts out with demonstrating his red light therapy routine. It's pretty much just wearing a hat with lasers in it three times a week for 15 to 20 minutes. I think he mentioned he's using it every day. This is actually not suggested based on data from more than nine studies that I have looked at that had some decent uh, sample size in them and they were human studies. None of them had uh, subjects wear these uh, helmets more than three times per week. What you essentially just need to do is just simply use any helmet device or any cap like this one that you find in the market that has a 650 to 660 nanometer wavelength. And what you want to target here is pretty much to have that sweet spot of the red light frequency that goes from 620 to 750 and beyond 750 you just need that 650 to 660 nanometer wavelength that's the red light frequency that has been um, established uh, as in, in many studies as the go-to uh, frequency for the proper penetration uh, of the laser into the epidermis ideally you don't want to have very long hair very thick hair you want to uncover the area where you want to simulate hair growth before using red light therapy if it's the uh, hairline, you want to, you know, use maybe some type of headband or a comb or like this special plastic headband that will at least uncover the diffusely thinning areas in the hairline. And there, that's where when you want to put on the helmet. It has been shown that if your hair is too thick, uh, you know, too layered on top, too long, it actually has been shown that uh, it may not be as effective for the laser to reach the skin and then penetrate deeper into the dermis layer where you or hair bulge area is, that's the area near the hair follicle, a little bit above where the stem cells are being produced and then they go lower into the dermal papilla where they form the hair germ. So let's first hear about his topical formulation because that's like the meat and potatoes of his whole video. This is the, the treatment that will be responsible for, you know, 80% of his results very likely and then things like low level laser therapy, microneedling with PRP, basic care, uh, and then some advanced advanced therapies that he's experimenting with right now will be, you know, the bonuses. The next thing I do is I apply this topical to my scalp on a daily basis. You've probably heard of it, of topicals like Rogaine and Minoxidil 5%. Both are effective. We added a bunch of other goodies to our topical formulation. We found it in the evidence and then we had a, a local compounded pharmacy make it for us. So we've published this recipe and you can take that recipe share it with the compound of pharmacy and so we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten different ingredients pharmacy and have them make it for you kind of a hassle i know but it's the only way to get it done you can also go to uh groups that sell these far these uh, formulations they may not have all the things we've listed but if they've got you know the basics like minoxidil uh then cool but we really tried to create the most powerful hair I would add here the basics like minoxidil and finasteride. I apply it once a day. You can apply it twice a day, morning and evening. So really your preference. All right. So that's enough. So I would for sure want to have finasteride there. I would have want to have minoxidil there. These are the FDA approved medication. You cannot go wrong with them. <laughs> they will stop your hair loss uh, most guaranteed. And then the rest will be just, you know, we can discuss. Caffeine, yes. I would want to have it there if you can have this compounded, if you can add it somehow there. But be careful, 1% caffeine has not been studied in studies on hair loss. Topical caffeine only has been studied with 0.2% concentration. This is five times more. So if you apply it in 
late afternoon before bed and you do even needling like every other guy nowadays like this can absorb quite rapidly and you may get some disruptions uh, of your sleep uh, so be careful I've tried it with micro needling in the 0.2 percent and I put it on uh, before bed and I felt a little bit too active like I, I wasn't able to fall asleep easily so be careful he also mentioned that sometimes he applies it twice a day which can again be even twice of the one percent uh, concentration of caffeine so be careful uh, I would consider caffeine in this solution since it has some benefits and it has been studied even compared to uh, minoxidil 5% it this 5% uh, in one uh, study that was actually funded by the company that creates this caffeine lotion uh, alpacin so be skeptical when looking at those results but what they uh, realized was that the energy and hair counts after six months in the caffeine group and minoxidil group were quite similar uh, so I would want to have caffeine there it's a nice bonus it's a nice natural remedy but make sure that you use it in the morning rather than in the late afternoon or evening finasteride is the second ingredient 0.25% one no thanks that's too strong for me it's 10 times higher than what I'm using right now as a topical finasteride uh, and even again if he uses this twice a day sometimes like good luck <laughs> accumulating a lot of finasteride in your system because uh, this is a representation of 2.5 milligram of finasteride oral in one milliliter of this solution so if you use it twice you know you get like a lot of finasteride in your system per day so again 2.5 milligram finasteride is the equivalent of what you get in one milliliter here so again if you're diffuse thinner you're applying a lot of this solution or even twice a day man you get gonna get a lot of absorption of finasteride in your system based on the study that used this exact concentration and tested how was the penetration of this and what was the dht lowering in the system after applying this it was guys 68 to 75 percent so that's a lot that's more than with the oral propecia tablet you know one milligram which would be around 50 to 64 percent so you're actually getting probably even more side effects because you lower your dht more substantially with the 0.25 percent topical solution again this is 2.5 times higher than the approved equivalent you know in one milligram of finasteride so i would uh, consider for sure this ingredient in it most important in my opinion to be in this mix if you want to stabilize your hair loss as soon as possible and be successful with regrowing hair in the long run however this is too strong minoxidil five percent second most important ingredient in this uh, solution in my opinion he has it with triclosol which is nice uh, usually guys who use minoxidil with propylene glycol alcohol it can dry out your skin can cause itchiness we can see it in studies as side effects uh, he has it with triclosol which probably makes it more skin friendly and i've tried triclosol with topical minoxidil and it really feels better on the skin so if you can have this compound it's going to be nicer but it's not going to really change the effectiveness of the minoxidil five percent it is the most potent energy and hair promoter and best vasodilator out of the all ingredients in this study there are going to be two more ingredients i want to now talk about and we will kind of uh, talk uh, in conjunction with minoxidil still so diclofenac 0.5 percent and tea tree oil 5 percent now diclofenac most of you guys probably have never heard of so what is it so he has it from a study that i already stumbled upon years ago and i had issues compounding this formula from pharmacies in europe uh, they created this multimodal solution where they use minoxidil Oxidil, they used diclofenac 0.5% and they used tea tree oil 5%. And you can see that this solution. Uh, that's the formulation A, by the way. This solution performed very good compared to the formulation B that only had minoxidil and formulation C was a placebo solution. And if you go to the hair counts, uh, you know, placebo versus 32 weeks later, you can see that the formulation with diclofenac and uh, tea tree oil uh, had a whopping 62% hair count improvements between baseline and 32 weeks. So from 133 to 217 hairs. That's a lot. If you compare this to just minoxidil formulation, it still had a very high improvement in hair counts from 122 to 170. So this study is really a little bit uh, out of the ordinary. This study has been done before even microneedling research really took off. So this is 2013 and we, we are getting like hair counts better than what has been established with minoxidil and microneedling uh, but this time it's with this multimodal formula so it must be special right so before i talk about it further in the placebo group we are seeing a very very drastic decrease in the hair counts from like 140 onto 82 which will be like 
minus 40%. And we never see this in placebo groups on minoxidil. And I screenshot like three other studies, uh, the bigger ones on minoxidil, where there was placebo group included. And you can see that in the placebo group, you never get those very dramatic decreases. It usually even goes up at first and then it stalls. Like here, you can see the blue line. It's a placebo group in one study. And then you can see the white column. You can see that it goes a bit lower, but if you look at the percentage points, maybe it went from 15 on to like five, so maybe 10% decrease. And in this one, which was a big 120 week study, uh, it went from zero to minus five, 6%. So minus 40%, like something must have happened in the placebo group. And um, it, this study just, just sounds too good to be true because it's way better. I would say even this formulation B without those additional two ingredients performs almost as good as minoxidil with microneedling, which is weird. Like getting you like giving you the 40% hair count improvement, even without microneedling, like that sounds too good to be true, which is again, something I'm not discouraging you guys to try this out. At the bare minimum, you get the nice antimicrobial benefits of tea tree oil and uh, diclofenac 0.5% has never been studied, just a pure ingredient uh, for hair loss. So I, I cannot tell you much here, but the tea tree oil has nice effects. They put it into conditioners, shampoos, because uh, it can really improve your scalp microflora if you have overpopulation of the bacteria, yeast, uh, that cause other, uh, you know, uh, myriad of skin conditions, uh, things like seborrheic dermatitis. Tea tree oil can help you manage that and keep it under control. Many guys don't see results with minoxidil because they have inflammation on the scalp, bad microflora, oily, a lot of yeast and bacteria overgrowth. So that will help you, you know, at the bare minimum, regulate you all these things, even if it's not going to increase the effectiveness of minoxidil. I had, however, issues uh, from pharmacies, especially in Europe, when I came there and tried to, you know, tell them, hey, can you compound this for me? Uh, it wasn't possible. And that's simply because oftentimes they don't have those ingredients. You would need to source them or they would need to source them or buy them in, in bigger quantities. And then it would just cost a lot of money. So that's why I don't know how Brian is using it. Maybe he's he's buying a lot of these ingredients in bulk and then just uh, gives it to the pharmacy and, and, and they produce, uh, you know, a one year supply of products from, from them. I don't know how he does it, but uh, it, it's tough to have this compounded. One thing with finasteride that I even forgot was that uh, it's even impossible pretty much to have finasteride solution compounded by a pharmacy for you unless you have a prescription. So uh, one thing that I forgot on finasteride, uh, finasteride is a prescription medication. But diclofenac and tea tree oil mixture, again, it seems to be another enhancement, something that boosts the absorption of, uh, of minoxidil. They didn't really explain in the study how it uh, works, but I have not seen any further research into diclofenac and tea tree oil that would confirm this study from 2013. Like nobody really picked up those ingredients again and tried to make a new research on it. So there are some studies on tretinoin, which I'm wondering why tretinoin is not here because tretinoin is uh, improving the outcome of minoxidil absorption by uh, activating sulfotransferase, which is the enzyme converting the inactive minoxidil into the active one. And it's missing in this product. So that's a bit odd. These two ones, I, I would like to see more research on. Let's go to another, to the rest four ingredients. Uh, sorry, we skipped the azelaic acid. So azelaic acid, 1.5%, not that important of an ingredient to me personally. I have used it in the past from Minoxidil Max. Uh, it's this website where they sell like topical minoxidil and they have uh, the one with 5% azelaic acid. So I use azelaic acid in the past. I mean, based on the research, here's the thing. So yeah, it does inhibit 5-alpha reductase on paper, but the studies are done on like mice. And then there is another study where azelaic acid seems to promote hair growth uh, through upregulation of specific proteins, GLI-1 and GLI-2. Now, if we go on studies on humans, there are two uh, using 5% uh, azelaic acid uh, lotion and 20% azelaic acid cream. The 20% one has been used in uh, alopecia areata patients and it worked. It was not the game changer, but there was like observation worthy, you know, 
uh, results, I guess. And then 5% acylic acid used in females versus 2% minoxidil. They actually had a uh, similar effect on the hair counts and the hair counts improved 20% in both groups with female. So that's why they say like, hey, acylic acid could be as strong as minoxidil 2%, which based on this study, it does make sense. But if you use it as a guy with more like aggressive hair loss, uh, you will see that even 5% acylic acid will not be the game changer. So yeah, nice addition. Uh, you do nothing bad uh, when adding azelaic acid, but I'm wondering why he only added 1.5% if the research is actually using 5% azelaic acid or even more. So in this case, azelaic acid is lower than I would expect. Now, if we go to rosemary oil, that's the seventh ingredient, it's 0.37%. Rosemary oil is hyped up. I see a lot of reels on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, people actually applying rosemary oil. So what's the hype about it? So it has like three potential benefits. So it's a potential vasodilator like minoxyl based on one study on rats. It's having antibacterial properties similar to tea tree oil based on this one in vitro study on cells and organisms. And then it also seems to be blocking DHT in uh, based on the study on, on mice. It has the backup from like animal and in vitro studies. But once you put that ingredient being rosemary oil into like human trials, and ra randomized placebo control trials, these promises and you know promising properties may not be confirmed and may not be translated into better hair growth, hair thickening, energy and hair count improvements. And that's usually what happens with many, many natural remedies. They are being studied in vitro on animals and they're promising, but they're, once they are being put into trials on humans, they really start sucking. Uh, but in this study, the hair counts actually improved in about 5% only with the 1% rosemary uh, solution uh, group and by 2% uh, in the 2% minoxidil group. So very negligible improvements. And, and these people have been using it six months. So you get like 5% hair count improvement in six months. That might be just seasonal fluctuation as well. Even if you don't use anything, you may get a bit better after six months and then you start shedding again. So even seasonal shedding, you know, can make your hair, you know, look a bit worse, maybe 5% to 10% hair count uh, could be lost on a, based on seasonality. So he uses 0.37% probably it's going to be even less potent. I don't know why he maybe adds it there, maybe for um, he likes the odor, or maybe it helps with that antibacterial properties. But uh, as far as, um, you know, better hair counts, this will be very, very, you know, low potency of a concentration, in my opinion, based on the studies, you know, that, that I have looked at. So I would maybe start with 1%. I wouldn't go lower than that for having some decent potency of, uh, you know, ro rosemary on my energy and hair counts. Uh, probably he uh, also finding the odor maybe too strong with 1%. You know, of course, the more oil you use, the more drops you, you put there of this essential rosemary oil, the more stronger you will smell like rosemary. So maybe that's the reason why he doesn't want to go, you know, around like 1% concentration. Let's go on, guys. We have three more ingredients to talk about. Uh, we have ginkgo, biotin, and melatonin. Now, ginkgo, 0.05%. I have seen uh, studies where it shows improved circulation. That's why you can buy it as a supplement supplement, you have cold limbs in the winter and things like these. So that does help some people. It improves their concentration, brain function and stuff like that. So there are studies on this, but low quality data, guys. We have one study, which is like an in vitro, very abstract study where they show that ginkgo possesses some types of, you know, uh, properties or growth factors that help with hair growth mechanisms. This is something that has never reached the stage of human trials and human testing. So I cannot really tell you more here. I don't want to get too abstract here with the ginkgo bilboa because it doesn't have the backup of human testing, what at least rosemary has, or things like, uh, you know, azelaic acid. These natural products have at least been tested in humans, whereas ginkgo has not been. Uh, the same with tea tree oil, by the way, and diclofenac, besides this one study on minoxidil. Uh, but uh, as a monotherapist, they have not been tested it in human settings. Now, biotin 0.01% is the last but not least ingredient. Biotin is an ingredient that helps the hair on the surface. It really makes the shaft look better, more resistant to things like hair breakage. If you are somebody who has longer hair, you comb a lot, the hair falls out, you maybe blow dry a lot, you make the hair go through some uh, processing, like you straighten it, you, you do the perming, bleaching, you know, things like these. Then, of course, the hair can be breaking off more and biotin 
ideally in the oral form, will make sure that uh, the hair will be more resistant to hair breakage. I would prefer taking biotin in the oral form, not in the topical form. In my opinion, this will not be that effective. I think ingredients for anti-hair loss purposes that should be included in topical products should be the ones that actually meant to go inside close to the hair root, hair follicle, things like minoxidil and finasteride that could actually regenerate that hair follicle. But things like biotin, they have no real effect on the hair follicle from the inside out because there is no established mechanism of biotin that would be helping that hair follicle to regenerate or produce more stem cells or proliferate stem cells in the hair bulge area. It's really hair shaft that that kind of biotin effects uh, positively. I would rather take it orally. Uh, I don't think it's going to really help here in that low concentration. And then we have melatonin 0.0033%. And that's actually something that I find interesting that he picked up on. And there is a review of 11 studies out of them, eight observed positive effects of melatonin on hair loss in concentrations of 0.0033% to 0.1% applied in period from 90 to 100 and 80 days. It's just very hard to find a solution of melatonin that you can already buy or maybe mix it together with your finasteride or minoxil. I found this one from Advanced Trichology, but they don't really tell how strong this melatonin solution is, how much, what's the percentage. They just say, okay, it's there next to some B3 green tea extract and stuff like that, but I don't see the, the percentage of this. So melatonin, interesting ingredient, but with melatonin, I would like to see more like the comparison research, like minoxyl group versus melatonin group, 180 days, and then see the increases in antigen hair counts, in uh, total hair counts and hair thickness, something like that. I think I'm missing this. Uh, there are plenty of uh, studies that maybe confirm that there is some mechanism in the melatonin that helps with hair regrowth. The same what we have seen in things like rosemary oil or, um, you know, ginkgo bilboa, but there is no comparison study, you know, minoxidil versus melatonin that I could now use as a proxy for you so we can see, okay, what can I actually expect by adding melatonin inside? If it's easy to do, if it's in inexpensive, I would add it. But if you can not get your hands on melatonin, I would not stress it. I would, just to sum it up, focus on mainly four or five ingredients here. First of all, finasteride and minoxyl, but make sure that the finasteride is not too strong. That I would add the ca caffeine as well. I would add either tea tree and diclofenac. And if you cannot do these two, I would focus on azelaic acid, rosemary, and uh, that's pretty much it. Because I know it myself, if I don't know something and somebody recommends me 10 things, I would like to know which are the most three, four important ones, because it's always like that. It's never like the 10 things that you have somewhere. It's not like they have equal importance always. Uh, and in this case, it, it's also not the case. So it's good to have somebody who tells you, okay, this is the most important stuff. Uh, so you are not worried about like, hey, I'm missing these two ingredients in my lotion and the brine has all 10. That's the reason why I'm not having the same results. You know, I don't want you to think like that because it's incorrect. I would like you to really compound the most effective solution here so you can stop your hair loss, regrow hair as fast as possible, but try to make it also realistic and not super expensive and overpriced because it's not going to be worth the money. Trust me, if you try to compound any little ingredient there that is probably very hard to get and source and it's going to be super expensive once they compound all of that. So so just focus on the basics. All right, that was it from me, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. For all of you who are interested in my one-on-one -on -one consulting services, check out the link in the video description below where you can learn more about how I can help you out, reverse your hair loss, or find the best hair transplant clinic worldwide uh, with the best options for your hair type, expectations, and budget. Make sure that you avoid all the pitfalls and mistakes guys usually do when choosing their hair transplant clinics. And the same counts for trying to reverse your hair loss. I can help you with that during a one-on-one -on -one Zoom meeting meeting and then uh, additional follow-up to make sure you execute all of the steps right. Ensure that your hair loss will be reversed quickly and effectively while avoiding wasting money and time and avoiding you stress along this journey. So if you want to know more about this, check out the link below and I'm looking forward to seeing you soon in another video. Take care.